someday I'm going to have decent lighting in here. And I won't have to hang up my bath towel behind me to make a video. Good thing I don't bathe! Did I say that out loud? Anyhow, I never thought that I would have to make a video explaining to a engineer Earth is not flat. Let us begin! Here I am, my head in the clouds, thinking about relativity and space travel and all this craziness. And, uh, I was, you know, just bored one day, sitting on the couch, looking through YouTube videos, and, uh, a couple Flat Earth conspiracy videos popped up in the, you know, the suggested videos to watch. And, you know, I'd seen those before, and I always had thought to myself, there's just no way, you know. But I'm a very open-minded person, and, you know, I was... What I love about the phrase, open-minded, it even includes the possibility that Earth might be a flat disk. You know, in the mood to watch something different, so I said, what the heck, I'll watch one of these. You know, I think it would be good for a laugh. Well, uh, about halfway into it, I wasn't really laughing. I was actually uh, questioning a lot of things. Um, and uh, one of the biggest things that caught my attention was planes flying on a spinning earth trying to land on north and south runways. A problem that no physicist or engineer out there has ever thought of before in the entire history of avionics. I, I started to, to look into the curvature of the earth and the rotation and the speeds of earth and it, it kind of blew my mind that I never really thought about how fast the earth rotates or how much it actually curves. You know, here I am researching flat earth theory flat earth theory and I'm actually studying the curvature of earth and the speed at which it rotates I mean there's some serious irony there um, you know our earth you know, our model shows it spinning from, from west to east around an axis which is represented by this little stick and um, the circumference of the earth at the equator you know right here is, well, the circumference of the Earth is 20, 24,901 miles. So at the equator, since that's the farthest point from the axis of rotation, um, and there are 24 hours in a day, the speed of the Earth is 24,901 miles divided by 24 hours gives you 1,038 miles per hour. That's the instantaneous velocity at any point along the equator. I mean, that's what it has to be if everything we're told is true. So far, most of that is correct. Almost 24 hours a day. It depends. We have Earth's uh, rotation speeds up sometimes, it slows down sometimes, depending on how the masses on Earth is are moving. 24 hours a day, yes. But that is from the point of view of the center of the sun, way out there, 93 million miles away, more or less. So that's, that's really fast. Uh, that's faster than the speed of sound. Uh, yes. If Earth's atmosphere did not rotate with the rest of the planet, Earth would be a hell of a different place. It would be extremely noisy. Life would not exist. Mountains would be scoured down until they're flat. But Earth's atmosphere rotates with the rest of the planet's surface. You have convection cells that move air up. You have Coriolis effect because Earth is a spinning oblate sphere. You have wind directions. You have wind speed. But generally speaking, Earth's atmosphere rotates with the rest of the planet. Uh, which is Mach 1, uh, 761 miles per hour. So that, I, I never really thought about how fast that is. Um, you know, I, I always thought, the, you know, just kind of assumed it was moving really slow and, and you know, you don't really think about how much distance has to be covered in, in one day. And by the way, that only matters if you're an astronaut or a space alien. So, anyway, 
one of the first things I did is I set up a problem about the spinning planes. You know, it's a physics problem. I studied relativity. I think I figured I could do this. The idea of this problem is that we are an observer, a stationary observer, looking at Earth, watching a plane fly. And this is based on a direct flight I took in college from um, JAX to LAX. Um, the two airports are about 2,000 miles away from each other. Rum line, 2,152 miles, 0.71. Great circle distance, 88 miles less. And, uh, you know, I flew there and then flew back, and I, I like doing the problem going back because it's just it's more interesting that way. Um, because, you know, we're, we're moving, we're rotating with the Earth. And also a lot of, flat, some flat Earthers out there have said things like, uh, you know, if, if, if the Earth is rotating a thousand miles per hour at the equator, you know, planes can't fly that fast so they can't catch up to it. And that's, that's not really true because if the plane's already rotating with the Earth when it takes off, it's just, it's, the, the speed it gains in the air is added to the initial speed it already had. From the point of view of the Sun, why even mention it? So that, that's not true. But there is a problem here, and that's what I want to get into. So these two airports, are 2,000, you know, here's my dimension line here, they're 2,000 miles apart roughly. And we're just going to say they're 2,000 miles apart in order to keep this simple. And there's the first desert file complaint. On a flat disk, a rum line will be the shortest distance between Los Angeles International Airport and Jacksonville Airport, Florida. On an oblate sphere, the great circle distance will be shorter. Guess which one is correct? Guess which one is the shortest route? Just take a guess! Okay, and they're also, you know, they're not at the equator. They're, they're north of the equator. Uh, a little over 2,000 miles, both of them. You know, Jacksonville's over here in Florida, and LAX is over here, California. Um, LAX is about 250 miles north, I think 200 miles, 250 miles north of L or JAX in Jacksonville. Yes, the parallel between Los Angeles International Airport and Jacksonville Airport is, pardon me, 249.11 mile. But we're going to say that they're at the same latitude just to keep it easy, to keep the problem easy. And so as I was showing you on the ball, you know, as you, as you move up away from the equator, the diameter of the Earth around the center axis decreases, so your velocity decreases. Yes, for all of you people out there who happen to be sitting on the sun, you will see Los Angeles International Airport appears to be rotating slower than Jacksonville, Florida. You can calculate this, and I played around with some numbers, and I got you know between 850 and 900 miles an hour for both airports, so I just said let's just use 900, just, just to keep it easy. No, let's be precise. Los Angeles International Airport, from the point of view of the sun, that is, the apparent motion of the sun going over the meridian of Los Angeles International Airport, 854.96 miles per hour. Jacksonville, Florida Airport, <clears throat> apparent motion of the sun, 890.3 miles per hour. The difference in latitude is 3.6 degrees. The different speed, therefore, is 35.4 miles per hour difference between them from the position of the sun. Everybody who's currently sitting on the sun, please raise your hand. Oh, I look like a Donald Trump supporter. Uh, skip that. Um, yeah, it's a hypothetical problem, but it, it, it is based on reality. Sort of based on reality. He started in reality and then he diverged. Let us take a schematic diagram look. At the Los Angeles International Airport's latitude, which we call the parallel, because latitudes are parallel here on planet Earth, which, by the way, is an oblate sphere, and travel that parallel north of Jacksonville, Florida Airport, one will have traveled 
six miles. That is the rum line. I didn't feel like calculating the great circle, which of course will be shorter distance. Conversely, if you follow the Jacksonville Airport south to Los Angeles International Airport's Meridian Line, the distance is 2,181.3 miles. This is because Earth is an oblate spheroid. We can also calculate the apparent motion of the Sun at both parallels. The northern parallel, 854.8 miles per hour. The southern parallel, 890.3 miles per hour. This is, once again, because Earth is an oblate spheroid. So, or, so the reality we're all taught to believe. So, here we are. Let's, we're going to fly back to JAX. Sitting on the airport in LAX, we're going 900 miles an hour east. You are sitting at the airport and going 900 miles an hour east. How are you doing that? You know, the Earth is moving that fast, but we can't feel it because everything's stuck to it, right? So we're told. So we're told? Earth is not moving that fast, except if you happen to be sitting on the sun. Are you doing that? No. You are sitting in a chair at Los Angeles International Airport. You are therefore moving zero miles per hour. So... The plane takes off and gets up to its cruising altitude, whatever that is for the day, 30,000, 33,000 feet, whatever they're going to fly at. And it gets up to a cruising speed of, let's say, the velocity of the plane, VP, equals 600 miles per hour. No. The average speed that one travels between Los Angeles International Airport on an aircraft to Jacksonville, Florida Airport is 319 miles per hour. That is average ground speed. Average air speed will be different. Now, since it was already moving... The no, the airport was not already moving. Velocity of the plane relative to Earth, which we'll call VPE, why not call it ground speed, which, by the way, is 319 miles per hour. Is now 600 plus 900 miles an hour gives us 1,500 miles per hour. I'm sorry, huh? What? I must not have heard correctly. Uh, say again. Is now 600 plus 900 miles an hour gives us 1,500 miles per hour. I'm sorry. <sighs> Okay, la la la, okay, I can hear... Say that again? Is now 600 plus 900 miles an hour gives us 1,500 miles per hour. 319 miles per hour. If you are sitting on the sun and you see an aircraft heading east, 319 miles per hour, from International Airport, Los Angeles, the speed relative to you sitting on the sun is 1,174 miles per hour. Are you sitting on the sun? This thing's really moving. Okay, but it's relative velocity, so it only seems like 600 miles per hour to us on the plane, right? Yes, for us on the sun, it's going a hell of a lot faster. That's the theory. So, everything makes sense. We're moving fast, 600 miles per hour faster than the Earth is spinning, so we're, we're moving towards Jacksonville. But here's where we run into a problem. Let's say there's a north-south runway in Jacksonville. Now, Jacksonville's runways are actually orientated um, kind of 45 degrees northwest and uh, northeast. Due to the prevailing winds, which is caused by the Coriolis effect, But north-south runways do exist. You can go look on Google Earth, you'll find them. They're all over the place. And, of course, LAX's runways all point east-west, I and mean, they're right on the water, um, or right on the ocean. So we, we get up here to this point, and you know, right before they make the turn, the plane slows down. Make the turn! 
What? Aircraft leave Los Angeles International Airport and they head to Kentucky. And then they turn south to Florida? Is that what you think happens? Let's take a look and see the flight path. Flight path of a aircraft going from Los Angeles International Airport to Jacksonville, Florida Airport. Here is the Great Circle distance and route from International Airport Los Angeles to Jacksonville Airport, Florida. Note, it is a curved line. Dude, do you understand why it is a curved line? Let me give you a hint. It's not fucking flat! Ahem. Do you see any right angle turn in that flight path? No, you do not. This shows a rum line, which is in red, and a great circle route, which the aircraft actually fly on a oblate sphere. The blue line is shorter than the red line. That is why aircraft take the blue line, not the red line. Relative to the apparent position of the sun, the relative speeds between Los Angeles International Airport and Jacksonville, Florida Airport is 35.4 miles per hour. Because Earth is an oblate steroid, if one wants to fly the shortest distance and therefore use the least amount of fuel from Los Angeles International Airport to Jacksonville, Florida Airport, one must first get off the ground and then aim for Kentucky. One then makes very minor direction changes constantly during the flight path until one ends up in Florida. That is the shortest distance. That's right. It appears curved on a Mercator projection. If Earth was not an oblate sphere, this would not work. It does work. Okay, this is where the problem comes in. Planes cannot stop flying before they make a turn. They can't go to zero. And to go to going to zero would bring you back to 900 miles per hour that you started at. Uh, no. Going to zero would take you to zero but you can't go to zero because a plane has to keep flying forward to have uplift on the wings and make, <laughs> keep, keep itself in the air you know, duh therefore it doesn't go to zero therefore why even mention it so it's going to slow down before it makes the turn but it's not going to zero long before it gets there it has already made the turn so let's say it drop. It slows down to 300 miles per hour, you know, and then it also that's the, that's the speed it slows down to before it makes this this 90 degree turn or this this right angle turn. On the very rare occasions that aircraft need to make 90 degree right angle turns, they bank. They don't go. Er, stop. Er, it go. Structural engineer, huh? So here. The plane, right before it makes the turn, is traveling at V P prime equals 300 miles per hour. And V P prime is just the new speed, okay, or the new velocity in this direction. But it's also got its relative velocity to Earth, which would be V P E prime, is now. 300 from 1500 is 1200 miles per hour. Yes, if you plan on landing on the sun. Presumably, and I am just presuming here, you could correct me, but I am presuming you plan on landing on Jacksonville, Florida Airport, which the relative velocity from the aircraft going east is zero. I could be wrong, maybe you really are planning on landing on the sun, but it's the aircraft speed is 319 miles per hour, ground speed, the wind speed could be different, plus zero. So now as this plane goes through the turn, when it gets here, say the midpoint of the turn, it's got a vector of 300 miles per hour, which is its airspeed, this VP prime in this direction, but it also still has this velocity of VPE prime right up here. 
relative to the sun, not Jacksonville, Florida. 1,200 miles per hour. It doesn't lose that velocity. It can't because the Earth is spinning under it. Relative to the sun, not Jacksonville, Florida. You know, and it had that initial speed when it took off. The only way you can get rid of that is if you make the Earth stop spinning. Relative to the sun, not Jacksonville, Florida. So, you know, when you get down here and you're trying to line up with the runway, you're still, you're going 300 miles per hour towards it. Make that look a little better. And you still got VP prime here, but you also have VPE prime. Relative to the sun, not Jacksonville, Florida. Well, there's a real problem there because the airport, the ground over here, is moving, if you can see that, at 900 miles per hour. No, it is moving zero miles per hour. You know, we said the velocity of the Earth is the same at both airports. But the plane is moving to the east still at 1,200 miles per hour. Relative to the sun, not Jacksonville, Florida. The plane is moving faster than the runway. They can't line up. What you actually get if you draw this point over here, actually let's, let's erase this and do it right here where we started. What, we, what you would actually end up with is a path that looks like this. More of a linear path, because the plane, you know, this point represents the plane. The plane has a vector this way and another much larger vector this way. If you are standing on the sun, looking at the plane, then yes. So does the fucking airport! So you're getting something like that. The plane is actually, the plane is actually sliding sideways th through the air. That doesn't make sense. I mean, it's, it's kind of... What's going on? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Therefore, Earth is flat. Let's make this real simple, as painless as possible. When you're looking at Los Angeles International Airport, you don't look at it from the sun. You look at it from, if you prefer, Jacksonville, Florida Airport. What is the speed difference between airports? Zero miles per hour. We're looking on the surface of the planet, which, by the way, is an oblate spheroid, not a flat disk. Is that rest here? Is that rest there? Relative speed between the two? Zero miles per hour. The sun has jack shit all to do with anything. Why the bloody fuck even mention it? Structural Engineer! I sure hope that infrastructure bill does not pass. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it.